Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Grivy, here with a brief introduction before today's amazing episode. Welcome back to the October Mega Marathon. We hope you guys are having as much fun with it as we are. You know the deal. 31 days, 31 pods. We aren't skipping days. But if you do want all 31, you have to go over to support the show on Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash Film Alchemist Pod. Our patrons over there got to uh, select the two Patreon exclusive horror movies they wanted this month, and we'll get a feature length horror movie commentary over there as well. So it's a great way to help support the show, help grow the show. It's also the best way to help have some uh, some authorship of the show. Right? You get to choose what you're hearing, uh, this, that, and the other. We appreciate our patrons so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you who are doing that over there. We love you. We appreciate you. The YouTube Film Alchemist. Email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Make sure you're leaving those five-star ratings and reviews everywhere you find the show. And if you guys would be so kind this month specifically, we're on the socials, that kind of stuff, uh, reach on out, man. Whether it's a DM, a text, just talk to someone you know who loves movies, especially horror movies, right? Send them an episode. Let them know that we're in the middle of the horror movie mega marathon. Invite them to come in and join what we're working on right now. Uh, and let's blow this horror mega marathon up. It's our favorite time of the year. We do a lot of work for this, uh, and we're trying to grow it as big as possible. All right, without any further ado, today we're joined by one of our dear friends, one of our very first uh, guests that we reached out to when we started the October Mega Marathon, Jessica Rose, a tremendous writer, a tremendous author, a tremendous friend. Uh, we love her very much. Uh, she is a mom. She has a beautiful little boy. And so for her to take time out of her insanely busy schedule to stop and talk movies with me, uh, it always means the world to us. And we wish her all of the success. She has some really cool projects coming up. So make sure you look in the show notes uh, at where you can find Jessica and all the awesome things she's working on. Go support her. You will thank us later. She's wonderful. Uh, you need her in your life just like we do. So Jessica was... Uh, was ready to pick, and she chose Cobweb, an awesome new movie that kind of came and went like dust in the wind, as it were, in the movie theater this year. But I think this Halloween, this October season, it's going to really find an audience uh, is one of these awesome new Halloween horror vibe movies. Uh, so it was a great conversation. It's a really fun movie. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we did. I know you'll enjoy Jessica for sure. So again, check the show notes. Make sure you're following Jessica uh, and supporting her work wherever you can. Without any further ado, Cobweb. Everyone, welcome back to the show. Our uh, our longtime friend and returning co-host with here on the October Mega Marathon today, uh, Jessica Rose. Welcome back. Would you like to introduce yourself, where people can find you, and uh, introduce the movie you thought would be awesome to talk about today? Thank you so much for having me. This is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> Absolutely, it's become the best tradition. Uh, uh i'm jessica rose uh i'm a writer i'm an artist you can find me on instagram um at jj rose seven um and i chose uh 2023 uh samuel bodine's cobweb cobweb yeah so this one was kind of interesting because it came out and it was one of those that got such little theater play it was by me but i had to drive over an hour to get to it and I was like, I'll try to work that into my schedule. And then was just gone immediately. Like a week later, it was out of the theaters already. So I don't think I even saw it in any of my theaters. That's what I mean. I feel like it's one of those that it didn't stick around long enough, which I think is a tragedy. Because I think once people start seeing it now that it's streaming and this and that, I think this is going to be an insanely popular movie. So I think what actually hurt its release is that it came out around the same time that Talk to Me did. Yes. So you have one film that's, I mean, undoubtedly explosive and getting all the love. And mm -hmm. I think Cobweb just kind of snuck in there and snuck yeah. back out. Talk to me had that advantage of it was made by people that really cut their teeth on social media content. Yep. So there was a great marketing campaign behind that. I saw Talk to Me everywhere. I saw The Hand. And Cobweb, mm -hmm. I feel like I saw 
maybe Last Voyage of the Demeter, something along those, but not that because that came out months after. But one of those kind of like, I went to see a horror movie. That's like me and my brother and mom's thing. <laughs> and there was just a trailer for this movie, Cobweb. And from the trailer, I was like, I have no idea what that movie is. I have no idea when it's coming out or what to look for. Um, and it just kind of came and went. And I was like, I'm a pretty hyper plugged in guy about movies. And it slid through. So my hope is, is that this gets that, that kind of streaming resurgence, right? Like, I think a movie that a lot of people are likening it to was when Malignant dropped during the pandemic. Sure. And it was just kind of this wild, offbeat, fun movie. Um, and I hope Cobweb gets that, honestly, because I think it is this, it's kind of this beautiful, like, Goosebumps by Stephen King vibe that I really like. I really love what this movie's doing, and I hope it finds an audience now. I think one of the things I love about it in that same vein is that it's a it's a suggestible movie. You can suggest yes. this movie to people. It's scary. I think it's got some really great scares. Hopefully we'll talk about. But it's a movie that I can recommend to people that might not necessarily love horror, but love like maybe a spooky movie, a mm-hmm. spooky movie Halloween time of the year. I love that I could be like, oh, you should watch Cobweb. It won't mess you up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, you there's will, no you know, dog getting a... murdered in this one, I think. So, like, that's a huge plus now. Um, like, are you not bothered by childhood trauma? <laughs> yeah, we... Cobweb. All of us that grew up before the year 2000, we're totally familiar with childhood trauma. <laughs> yeah, it's got, like, this grim fantasy about it that's really, yes. like, you know, it's got that that nostalgia. And I why so many people really like it. I don't think it was something that people hyped up a lot mostly because it's got its flaws here and there but it's it's just such a good flick it's a good it's got good Great vibes flick. it's got all the working parts well you you had text me and said that this is just like a great halloween vibe movie and we don't oh, get yeah. enough horror movies that are specifically designed to be awesome halloween vibe movies and this one a thousand percent is right it kind of got lost in the summer in the theater but, you know, this October, hopefully everyone's watching it now because it's a perfect time of year for it. And it kind of has that throwback, like, Del Toro produced that movie Mama, right? This has given me Mama vibes. But yes. it's got that little extra teeth that the movie's like Malignant coming out. You got to have that little extra hard edge, right? Megan this year, another movie like that. Um, I think it just really strikes this balance of what I think is so fun about the movie. You use the word fable and that is something I'm latching on to a lot because it's a movie that through the, the machinations of filmmaking, right? It's a movie that eschews the invisible hand. It's like, we don't want you to get lost in the story and feel like you're just like absorbed in the world with this family. It's constantly on a stylized level, smacking us about, right? Pulling our attention to and fro, um, especially on an audio level, right? Like they're really drawing our, our mind and eyes, to the artifice of the story to incredible effect. Right. And I, there is this kind of super haunted house quality to it that I love, man. I I think they did such a wonderful job with this movie. I love that. I love the haunted house aspect. It's, it's the haunted house. It's the haunted family. There's, there's something I love like the There's something in the walls. What is it? What are they hiding? It's it. uh, you guessing the whole time and i love the twists and turns it takes it i'm i'm always i'm a viewer that i will never see a twist coming i yeah i don't try to look for it too much but <laughs> i love it i it, like i do it that's to the myself. best way to watch movies absolutely of course my husband's the opposite way and he's always trying to guess it he it knows better than yes. to tell me what the twist is going to be at the beginning of movies now because i'm like i don't want to know i want to experience it and I have been smacked by my wife a ton by saying, see that? This is what's <laughs> going to happen because that has, she's like, shut up. Shut no. up. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> I remember looking at him when, when Lizzie Kaplan is saying, don't let her out. I was like, oh shit. Here it comes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this I love is not too, what we thought. Cause, cause it, it's reminding us that this is different. It's not trying for a naturalistic um, kind of a film, but it's also not like an art house movie. Right. And so there's this moment at the start of it, they kind of weaponize modern horror against the viewer where, you know, it's kind of become almost like a cliche at this point 
that every A24 movie is just trauma and then you you give that trauma a monster face, right? Or whatever. And that's mm-hmm. what every A24 movie is. Deep-seated trauma made flesh. There's a long stretch of this movie where we, the audience, have to wonder ourselves, like, is there a voice in the wall or is this kid just fucking hitting the end of his ability to cope? Because, you know, he he's bullied. He's tormented. His parents are bizarre. Even though... And this is a movie, too, that benefits a ton from a second viewing because you can see what they're doing so clear. Yes. But the first time you watch it, you're like, Lizzie Kaplan obviously loves this guy. The dad is pretty creepily off-putting, like kind of sitcom-y in how he acts at the start. But you're like, all right, they're definitely not the parents that are helping make your life easier. And you're getting bullied relentlessly. And they don't let you trick or treat. You know, there's just something off. To where I spent the first start of the movie believing in my head they were going to do the it's some part of him. Yeah. Right? That he's hearing voices. And this is kind of the benefit of it coming and going without a big marketing campaign. Is I had no context clues from, you know, long overexposure to trailers. (laughs) So I think that not knowing where it's going, but still it being so sure-footed, I found that to be a really good uh, achievement of the film. Definitely. And it's the way that you were thinking, I got a little bit of that. And then I'm thinking to myself, is it going to be like that trick or treat segment where parents are murdering people and well, the father is murdering people. And, you know, when you cast are, are Lizzie they- Kaplan and Homelander, you're like, oh, evil parents. I get it. Yeah, like, you know. They also they're casting against our expectations. Right. They made a lot of great choices. Yeah, definitely. And and I think that that reads really well that like you have all these different scenarios that it everybody's thinking, oh, it could be this, it could be that. And you're trying to figure it out. And, and I think it goes in a completely different way than what they were hinting at, which I really like. It, it mm-hmm. It's not a super unexpected uh, twist that it takes, but it does play with you a little bit. And it does play with those tropes, like you said. And I think that that's, it's brilliant. And I like that maybe, you know, it's not marketed so much and we're not watching a bunch of teaser trailers or extended trailers. And, you know, it's a small miracle in today's world. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I actively not watch them is the sad part. That's you just can't help it. And even if you don't, someone's going to tweet something or put something on Instagram that tells you what's happening anyways. Mm -hmm. And so we've lost kind of that magic of just discovering like, oh, that cover looks cool. And just going on an adventure. And I, I I like that point you're making, right? About how they use all the tropes, right? This movie at its core, like there's a movie I love, right? The Possession with Jeffrey Dean Morgan. It's kind of like <laughs> a little, the debuck box or whatever. It's certainly not like top flight horror. But what it is to me is a really fascinating example of how studios think we want to watch horror movies. And kind of the good and bad of like, wow, it's really like high production value, but like they're kind of missing the point a lot. But I think it's just fascinating to watch on that level. And this movie's doing a lot of that, like a trope that I still find fucking hilarious that we put in movies every year is the little kid that draws some horrifying like murder scene. Yes. And a teacher or parents just like, well, this is a red flag. And you're like, if my kid was drawing someone being brutally eviscerated. Or like this shadowy, like, help me. <laughs> I want to just be like, hmm, what a what a wild imagination you have. And I'm a horror movie dad. I've, I've seen enough now that I'm like, this is fucking bad. Right? <laughs> and she's, she starts doing that. Oh, all these bumps in the night are just in your head. And so they're weaponizing, you know, the kid who sees the ghost. But we know everything's about trauma now. So they do a really good job of keeping us off balance, right? Or when he gets in trouble, because there's that great scene when he, the kid fucking smashed his pumpkin, right? And he hears that, you know, that talk behind the wall, right? And it's like, you know, don't be scared. I just want to talk. I think you could use a friend. And in my brain, I was like, immediately, that's his, like, inner desire. He desperately just wants to be heard and seen. And, like, a lot of people relate to that, especially a lot of us when we were younger went through some of that, right? And so when he pushes that, he's like, you have to learn to stand up for yourself. And he pushes that kid and breaks his leg. I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. He's unleashing like his own inner like evil child. I was like, so now we're doing the evil child movie. 
So they keep jumping between these like hallmarks of all these different kind of major studio movies. But they're always subverting it just enough that it keeps it really fresh. You don't ever feel like you're way ahead of the movie. No, no, because just when you think that you are, it kind of goes in a different direction and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. now we're now we're off the evil child. I was thinking it was going to go like a black phone row. Now it's like, oh, all these dead children are are speaking to him or going to wind up speaking mm -hmm. to him and he's going to retaliate against the parents and then you're like, are the parents as bad as they seem or is it just are the you know the filmmakers messing with us and they're making it seem like the parents are creepy but they're just parents and they're just overprotective because there's you know horrible yeah. things that happen on halloween like what i like that it it almost kind of like like the way that they gaslight their son is kind of the way that they're gaslighting Man. the viewers <laughs> it's wild because that scene when he comes home and it's like he broke a kid's leg at school and got expelled like, now he has to be homeschooled. And I was like, man, if that was me when I came home, my dad probably would have broken my leg and been like, you have to learn this lesson like a man. And like, <laughs> you know, eye for an eye and be like, oh, shit. And he's just kind of like, Peter, Peter, what happened? <laughs> and, like, he's pretty cool. He's like, we don't solve things with violence. And then his mom's like, he drew a picture and he goes, you little fuck, and, like, <laughs> loses it. And you're like, oh, my God. It's so like, you never know what's going on, right? And then they just do brilliant stuff like you know all of a sudden we're like all right he's losing it about the picture what's that about right ghost abductor we know that a kid went missing on halloween we know <laughs> that somehow somewhere in this house there's an answer to that we have no idea then he's like hey slide the fridge over and put this fucking kid in the basement and that's kind of the scene in the movie where you're like oh my god like this is going so much further than i thought we were gonna do this kind of like little kid who talks to ghost movie mm -hmm. now it's getting really fucking sinister like just that shot of dad silhouetted by the light his mom's like we're doing it because we love you and they leave him down there in the fucking pitch black no yeah. blanket no pillows no like he has a cot down here like has he ever been down here we see a fucking shackle on the floor for no reason and it's just the the fucking power of this image and this idea like, you're a parent now, too, right? Imagine looking at your kid and being like, you got to sleep in that fucking basement because uh, we disagree. It's, like, unimaginable. I know that <laughs> I think the first movie we did for the October lineup was Trick or Treat. And yes. I know I distinctively said, I love it when movies go for it and kill kids. Yeah. That was before I became a mom. And then you, then <laughs> and you become a parent. A you're mom. like, I'm not as punk rock as I was. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. And yeah. everybody told me it would happen to me. Yeah. Um, And it did. And it's really difficult to watch. I, I was like, oh, no, here we go. Because oh, yeah. I don't want to say I've been avoiding horror movies where, you know, the kids are getting the brunt end of it, which is pretty much all of them now. But it's, it's a lot more difficult to watch. And I didn't going this way. I was like, oh, this is abuse. So these parents are, they're not what they seem. They're not good parents at all. Um, I, I right. always think to myself, and that little boy is just so cute. He's adorable. He's so He's sweet. got that classic, yeah, like beautiful hair and his eyes are like three sizes too big for his head. Yes, it looked like my son. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, I can't even imagine putting down there. Like, I, what what scenario would that be? I would be high-fiving him. He breaks that kid's leg. I'd be like, don't touch my son. Dude, right? I'm like, because then later in the movie, right, the kid comes back as like this little fucking punk in a van with his buddies. And they're like, we're going to fuck him up and break his house. I'm like, his teenage cousins or brother are coming to fucking beat up a 10-year-old? Yeah. Like, I was like, like maybe this world? kid fucking deserved it. These maybe he should have broke his horrible. fucking neck. You know, like, this kid's a piece of shit. Or he's not a piece of shit, but his parents are also not yeah. great. There's, there's a lot of suspect parenting in this movie, right? Like when the teacher's driving over there for the ending and there's <laughs> just a little like fairy queen who's just standing in the road, not moving. And there's three other people, one of whom's about six feet tall, not say, telling her to get out of the road. I was like, something is very wrong with this entire fucking place. <laughs> like, I was like, what is she driving on help. my street? <laughs> yeah, Jesus H, man. Uh, yeah, that's no, like a, that's yeah. <sighs> That's definitely one of them. I think it, uh, it it juxtaposes a lot, you know, between those parents. And then you have the concerned teacher who's trying okay. to do the right thing. It's, we have to it's stop so and address this. Do you okay. think this lady had it coming? 
<laughs> this is line stepping of the highest order. I mean, in what world would a teacher go to a parent's home these yeah. days? Probably. I think we'd like to think our teachers care, but I was like, hey, if you just came to my house and you're like, my kid drew some weird stuff, do you abuse him? It's like the one time in the movie I was like, I think Lizzie Kaplan's right. Like, hey, man, how fucking dare you bring that shit to my house <laughs> with no evidence of anything? Right. I want to be like, why don't you worry about that kid that's bullying my son? <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's who he needs help from. This monster you know that's saying? fucking like, traumatizing maybe... him. Yeah, yeah. Because at the beginning, if I remember correctly, he had um the kid had that was bullying him. He came home with a bruise. And I'm like, well, that bruise is well, coming. He, from yeah. School. He even said he's like, recess is coming. Like he was in Game of yeah. Thrones or something. It's like, all right, dude. <laughs> um. Yeah, dude, when the teacher goes back and she's like, hey, I have his homework, and she wrote her fucking phone number on the paper. Yeah. I was like, all right, now you're like, you're you're doing too much. And I know it's a movie where we're seeing, like, all of this horrible, like, buildup. Right. But I was like, if, if a teacher came to my house, like, more than once in real life, I would lose my fucking mind on them, just like Lizzie can. And then the ending of the movie happens and totally disproves my point. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, she is yeah. she is the hero. You know, yeah. all these teachers out there are heroes. They really are. Um, oh, my, my son started kindergarten during the pandemic. So I, there was one <laughs> teacher who ran a Zoom meeting for 65 kindergartens on the first day of school. And I was like, never have I had more fucking respect for a teacher that's in my life that she didn't immediately just turn the zoom off and quit being a teacher yeah. like they i have the utmost respect yeah they don't are... come to people's houses and i'm sure um <laughs> uh, i was a teacher for a short while i gave up and so i they are they get my praise all the time yeah. but i think unfortunately um like when she does bring the situation to the principal principal it's principal right um, and he some administrator her, like, who like admonishes her. Yeah. 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 He's basically like, uh, unless there's like severe signs, which I'm like, well, what are severe signs that, that there's nothing that you can do? Then we got to have yeah. some evidence or anything. And I'm like, that's the unfortunate situation with a lot of abuse cases all over, no matter what that they are, that there has to be some evidence. And I feel like she is trying to find the evidence because right. she knows in her gut that's the by the end of the movie the kid is definitely abused yes <laughs> at the start of the movie all the abuse is happening in the school yeah so i was like it was just this weird thing where like i was kind of like, like kid's safe. do i agree nope. with the creepy mom that like get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, you're like, thank God the teacher's here. But it was just like, a, damn. I, I have, like, a habitual, like, don't get involved in anyone else's shit. Oh, yeah. Kind of a mindset. Like, you know, oh, yeah. life is hard enough. And, like, sometimes you'll see shit or, like, things will happen in the neighborhood. And, like, some of my neighbors are like, I want to know more. And I said, I'm going inside and locking my doors. <laughs> I don't want to hear any comments. I don't want to be oh. asked an opinion. Uh, we got to live together, right? I don't want to... And, you know, I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> no. I've never seen a fucking crazy uh, body attached to, like, the longest <laughs> hair ever killing people. Like Spider Girl. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think in that scenario I'd be heroic, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> it's yeah, I'd be like, uh... No, like, the scene... the cops, that's their yeah. job. <laughs> the scene when she gets brought into the house uh, by Lizzie Kaplan and Homelander is, mm. like, that is my absolute fucking nightmare come to life. Which is just uncomfortable talks with people that, like, now I'm in the middle of their shit. Like, he's bleeding on the table. She's getting all riled up. They're fighting. You know, like, how dare you accuse me of being a bad mom? And I was like, I'm sitting on the couch, and that scared me more than anything else in the movie. Like, my heart was pounding during that scene. It's that so confrontational. Oh, it's so bad. Because by this point in the movie, I think my mind had been trying to figure out what's happening. And I was like, you do not cast the fucking Homelander to be the bad guy in your horror movie anymore. It's <laughs> too on the nose. And you can tell pretty fast how clever the movie is, right? And I was like, mm -hmm. if they cast Homelander, he's going to be a good guy. But then he's grabbing a hammer. I know he put the kid in the basement. So I was like, I, I could not figure out mentally what was happening. So I'm so uncomfortable on so many levels. Oh, that, that scene have, is a nightmare. And, and that then you scene have Lizzie also Kaplan. Does, 
Yes, and Lizzie Kaplan's fucking wigging out because seemingly she's trying to be a good mom. She might, there are moments where her husband kind of bulldozes her. Sure. And you're like, oh, that's not good either. Like maybe she's also not like totally free to be the mom she wants to be. Hmm. And so now she's lashing out at this. It's just all this like grown up shit splashing around that I don't want any part of. Um, But that seems another thing I really wanted to illustrate in the movie. The use of sound design in this movie is some of the best I've seen in years. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's like going to a Vegas magic show where they want you looking at what they're doing. And they have all these beautiful ways of misdirecting us or, you know. So that whole scene, it's kind of predicated on him kicking the wall and the washing machine going. Mm -hmm. And the rhythms they set us in. And then the washing machine stops, but we hear a footstep. And then it starts again. And he wasn't screaming when he had the one moment. Mm-hmm. And like the 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 rhythms of this movie they find with the sound design, right? Like the very first scene is like a classic childhood nightmare, right? You hear a bump in the night. He's looking around. They're kind of pacing it with this chime. Ding, mm-hmm. ding. And it's, it's just, so they do it like 10 times in the movie. Where there's this, and this almost never happens to me, but I'm just watching. I was like, the sound design of this is fucking incredible. Like the second time I watched it, I was just really focusing in on it and was blown away by not only the sound design, but the score is damn near perfect. I think it's Drum and Lace did the music. Um, and it is fucking awesome. We noticed that too because we watched this while Jack was sleeping. So we <laughs> had to kind of play with the volume and he's sleeping <laughs> right there beneath the TV. Yeah. And he's a good, but um, we noticed that as well, that we were like, wow, those sounds are so creepy and everything is just so like, it's quiet. And then the stuff that you want to hear that they want you to hear is brought out so beautifully. And uh, and that scene with the, with the washing machine, I was just on the edge of my seat the whole time. You know, you're just thinking to yourself, she's going to hear him. And then there's going to be a bigger confrontation. And yeah, he's going to hit her with the hammer as if I couldn't be uncomfortable enough watching grownups argue about grownup shit. (laughs) Now there's like a, Oh God, this kid's going to get her killed. Yeah. And what is that? I mean, it's fucking brutal. Even something like, you know, when he is doing that, he's calling on the old rotary landline. Yeah. To get his teacher. And then all of a sudden there's like, he thinks he hears something, but we don't know what it is. We hear he turns and his mom is already in the room, dead silent, watching him. And it's like, so even when they use absence, it's used to such fucking devastating effect, right? Or you hear, like, some scurrying once sister's out. And that, you know, punk is, like, banging the piano. And then all of a sudden you hear that ding. The one piano key where that's where our attention wants to go. And then he's pulled from under, right? Like, it's just brilliant. Yeah. Like, it's really, really incredibly well done. Yeah, I, I, it, undeniable. It was the sound, the, even, the visual effects were, in my opinion, really great. Oh, yeah. Could have did less with her. I, I, I don't ever want them to reveal the monster. Once I see the monster's face, I'm always, yeah. I'm I'm always little, done. It's but everything leading up yeah. to that was incredible. Her hair was so yeah. scary. You know, it, hair is just like, a, it, it, it's an upsetting image you know we we associate it so much with like beauty but then when you're seeing it like this long horrible like scary tail filled with spiders and Mm -hmm. and like debris from being in the walls it it slinks and follows her wherever it wherever she goes and that is just mortifying to me yeah (laughs) well i think it's yeah japanese curse films do this all the time right where like Mm -hmm. you're in water and then all of a sudden there's hair in there it's up Cause it's like the, it's if the hair's so long, it's almost as if you can't still a part of your body is attached to like this old time. And, you know, you're not meeting beauty standards. Like you were saying, there's just a lot. It's just gross too. Like everyone yeah. is familiar with like the, is that a hair in my fucking sand? Uh, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, uh, uh. it's just, yeah. it's, it's not natural for us. Right. But this creature is not natural. I don't know. It's hard because I know VFX and horror movies kind of have these two things, right? VFX, we want to see everything in a lot of detail. Usually. When that's a monster movie, then you're like walking a pretty fine line of what to show and what not. Sure. In sound design, you're never supposed to notice the sound design or else they've done it wrong, right? 
It's supposed to feel subtle like you're in the real world. And so the fact that they play a lot of sound design and it works is pretty cool. The effects, I don't know if it's the right balance, right? Because stuff like the the vomiting after the soup, amazing. Fucking amazing. Yeah. So well done. So well shot. Um, A lot of moments of the creature. Like when she pulls that kid under the piano and it just immediately like blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm kind of with you that the monster is not the greatest. And especially how they beat the sister air quotes at the end by just like hitting her the pipe and rolling her back in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's pretty fucking sad anticlimactic kind of stuff. But it is because it's like there's a scene when he wakes up and the voice tells him like mom and dad are evil, right? And so he wakes up having a nightmare. And he's hearing like that, you know, like the shuddering sound. And it, his dad's in the room with his eyes closed. And then he looks and Lizzie Kaplan's there with just shining eyes. Mm -hmm. And she runs and the lights stop. And then you, but you still hear sprinting and you're like, geographically, your mind knows that's wrong. She should already be in the room. But then it's this delayed run in the room and she jumps on him. And then he wakes up the other way like it's Inception into like his loving mother's arm in the sunlight. And I was like, they just have so many moments like that that are so fucking effective. Mm -hmm. I wish that, that they when, had put more. more yes, and, more and, and in the last theme. 20 minutes when we just do, here's this monster. But it, it the face almost looks like the fawn from Pan's Labyrinth. Yes. Because I was like, was that a real child? Was it a ghost? Was it an abomination? Was it a mutation? Like, what, what was this fucking thing supposed to be? I don't think the movie ever gives us a real answer for it that's satisfactory. Right. I was like, do I actually believe that was a sister that was just born deformed? And mom and dad are like, well, that sucks. Let's bury the rotted pumpkin and start again, right? Another <laughs> symbolic moment in the film. Very and good. then I was like, but she's like, I learned how to bite and climb when I was down here, right? When she now has the old lady voice, yeah. the old cigarette smoking lady. <laughs> and I was like, cool, I get it. You learned how to climb, but then you're also climbing on the sides of walls. Mm -hmm. We're like, that's no longer climbing. That's ghost shit. Yeah. It's like supernatural. <laughs> so by the end of the film, I don't know if I said, I was like, is she a metaphor again? I, I what, do you, mean, what did you make by the end of the movie with with sister? I think that that was that's the part of the film that I think that keeps this from being a really, really good movie. Uh, mm -hmm. And you like taking that next step into like classic territory. Yeah, where I'm like, I, I can be super enthusiastic about this movie because I'm confident in its ending um, and that and it just doesn't fall there for me. Um I couldn't tell. Is this a, is this like a more of a supernatural thing, or did they give birth to this girl who was kind of like a spider? Um, she, I know that she became one over time, but I don't know. Yeah. I was like, her face is so messed up. Is that from years of abuse right. and neglect? And I, I honestly, yeah. I thought they were going to go in a direction where they opened up, like they they unleashed like a witch or something. I was hoping yeah. for something Some a little bit more. Creature. Just anything that would have been like, I don't need an origin story. Um, yeah, never do a flashback for me. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Build I'm it into what we're do doing. Yeah. I'm glad that they didn't do like a flashback of like these people giving birth to like this like yeah. spider. Like we saw in uh, Texas Chainsaw New Beginning, and it's like Leatherface was born on the floor of a slaughterhouse and left in a dumpster. You're like, that's pretty fucking on the nose. He could have yeah. just been like a cannibal <laughs> poor guy in Texas, and that was fine with me. Yeah, um, no. Because it seems so like what they they're saying. Oh yeah, yeah. It seems like what they're saying is they had a kid who had some kind of birth defects and is maybe mutated. Mm -hmm. No explanation why. She became enraged at her lot in life and her parents who put her in a cage, but she was allowed to go trick or treating and kidnapped a girl and killed her. Kind of a coincidence if she just happened to escape on Halloween night. Um. <laughs> So the parents let her have some freedom and then they buried the skeleton very shallow in the pumpkin patch. Mm -hmm. So you're like, maybe these were like real Halloween hipster types. They used to be cool until this kid fucking destroyed their life and made them accomplices to crimes. <laughs> um, 
Because, like, you see Lizzie Kaplan when they even show the picture. The first time she sees the hole in the wall, she's like, ah, ah, like, she's melting the fuck down. Can't yeah. It. So it's, there's enough stuff there where it's it's still really interesting. And I would say, like, 90% of this movie fucking rocks. Yeah, There's going to be a ton of people that at the end of this movie just go, what the fuck was that? Like, what was all that about? Because then not only that, but it's like, she's, climbing out of the thing you won't be able to keep me here but it's like all right if i couldn't keep you here because like the prison pit at the basement is different than the whatever was in the walls you're strong enough to fucking rip bodies in half but you couldn't break through the wall that the teacher did in like 20 seconds right there's like all these just like what the like just tell me if it's a supernatural thing or not like you're giving me both worlds yep and it's really hard to lock in. And the, the face mask is pretty bad. The face mask is pretty bad. The only way I can reconcile it, and this is what I say to Nick when a movie ends and he's like, look, giving me that look like, that wasn't good. Yeah, are you fucking like, kidding me look? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's pretty much that. I don't yeah. want to, he, he's my favorite person to watch movies with and he loves movies just as much as I do, but he does give me that that wasn't that good look. Uh, but the thing I, I hate that- my wife does is she just starts giggling. Like, <laughs> like you can't be liking this. It's so dumb. I have to laugh at it. I'm like, yep. knock it off. I yep. do like it. <laughs> and I'm like, I do like it. Yeah. And I'm like, I do yeah. like it. And that's what separates <laughs> us from them. But I say to him all the time. I'm like, it's a fucking movie. It's a horror movie. Right. I think <laughs> you know? of it as you're, you're eating your delicious sandwich. Yep. And somehow based on what you've done, you pulled the meat and the condiment and the lettuce a little too far. Yeah. And the la- everyone's had that the last corner of your sandwich is just two pieces of bread. And you're like, is it even worth that bite? It's no longer the sandwich I love. And you're like, oh, I made it this far. It's I enjoyed still. every other bite of the sandwich. It's just this yeah. last one doesn't have any of the sandwich stuff. It's just the bread. That and that's so- this movie's 90% fucking righteous. And then at the end, it's just a head scratcher, right? And then they have this kind of nice postscript, right? Where her little hand sticking out. And uh, I think I wrote this down somewhere, right? Where she's like, it's in our blood. Because the child does fucking break that kid's leg and kills mom and dad on his own accord. Yeah. With the rat poison soup, right? And uh, she says, it's in our blood. You're just like me. Every night you'll lie in bed. Every time you see a shadow move, you hear a creak, you hear a groan, you'll think of me. We're family, Peter. I'll always be with you. So I was like, all right, now we're doing this fucking supernatural trauma thing again Mm -hmm. but she definitely scratched the teacher a bunch and ripped people's bodies in halves that amazing moment where we see lizzie kaplan's body folded up under the stairs so there's like a real mix of supernatural and dude that shot is amazing yes and so i'm like i just never know where they settle and i was like she's right this kid is a fucking murderer like does the teacher like is she giving him side eye like wait you killed your fucking parents and you broke that kid's leg at school. She's like, you're not coming home with me. Like, I'm not <laughs> taking that shit on. Uh, you know, I'm starting my life. I have a promising life ahead of me. <laughs> and then in the last shot, they seem to hint at that she's just going to kill him anyways. Or is that a night tear at the end? It's just, it's not enough. Right. Like a movie that's so good and well done deserves such a better ending. Well, and it's the, the allegory is just obvious you know you have a, a hidden family secret in the walls right. so you know and we all have that we're family it's in our blood you can't escape like you can be different from your family but you know it's still kind of like that like weird hereditary kind of a thing where it's like you just you can hide it you can smother you can ignore it you can mm-hmm. not remember it but it's always there in your your family tree and everything so i think that it's it's there. I think that what they do at the end with that little, uh, with that epitaph is it's hitting us over the head with it now at that point. And that I don't yeah. like either where I'm like, no, I got, we got it. <laughs> we got well, it. Yeah. It's like, again, I, the, the metaphor, the theme, the allegory never work. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. And Cause it the still thing doesn't, is like, it's not the, very cohesive. So yeah. Yeah. When they're doing the big Las Vegas magic show of like, look how well we construct the scene. Look at the kid creeping downstairs to spy on mom and dad to see if he's going to be in trouble. And these two giant shadowy mom and dads talk and he's in the middle of it. Beautiful, right? Like this German expressionist scene almost. And you're like, yes, love it. Love the whole movie. I love the journey I'm on. 
But the two of them don't work at the end because it's like, is this a, a a a message to the parents, right? Like your first right. daughter needed more and you failed, so then you also fucking sucked with the second son. And his journey <laughs> is one of being bullied and not heard. His parents won't give him any freedom. He has no expression. But then at the end, he doesn't have that anyways and is probably going to die really soon after anyways. Oh, and he just becomes an actual murderer. So who fucking cares if anyone hears him anymore? He learns to stand up for himself and it's through violence. Like, it's just... Yeah, he learns all of the wrong lessons. And then the parents seemingly... They did lock the kid in the basement, but they might have been okay parents who just gave birth to a monster, but they also covered up skulls and their... Like, what the fuck am I supposed to take from any of this? Yeah. And so when I when I look at it as just this amazingly crafted ride, right, that gives me all of these really good kind of thrills and chills, that stuff in the movie works awesome. Mm-hmm. Her coming out of that thing and her hand reaching out and her voice changing, mm-hmm. all of that is fucking amazing. Yeah. And her killing those punks, fucking amazing. Yep. Love that. The, the parents dying, fucking amazing. Yeah. And then it's just like the last 10 minutes, I was like, mm, all right. And like she, you know, the teacher runs out the door and she grabs the boy by the hair and he floats away. I was like, it looks cool. But I was like, what's the fucking point? So now she's going to put him in the pit so he can know what it's like, like to be neglected. And we're like, wasn't he already for most of the movie we watched? <laughs> <laughs> and then it just ends in like a fucking hit her with a stick and throw her. In, I I don't know. I got to say the ending for me is just a big swing and a miss. Yep. That's like you said, the last 10 minutes. And I, I, I was stuck on, Oh man, they're going to make this something just as it doesn't even have to be tied into the family. Mm-hmm. I don't even need that. I don't need the allegory. We actually don't. It's just need an it. actual sister who got locked up and is mutated. Give me or that. It's movie. just a fucking scary ass spirit that <laughs> that's so terrifying. Yeah. And they yeah. and they are trapped in this house. You know the yeah. housing market is terrible. They can't go anywhere. Right. Um. Or no, they, you uh, yeah. Know, they don't just... want people to see they have children cages and shit. Anyways, <laughs> you don't want that popping up on Zillow. <laughs> 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 There's something in the walls. We don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. I was like, oh, it's going to be something like super scary. Like, Just I do a monster be, movie. Yeah. Do a monster movie or do like a super scary. Like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, is she like a witch? Like a witch in the walls? Like, I had so- wondered that too. Like, is this family doing? Because I was like, they just have a big ass pumpkin patch. Yeah, they got cursed. I was like, somehow. that's not really like a food <laughs> crop and they hate Halloween. Yep. And so when they showed the skull in the garden, I kind of had that same thing. I was like, oh, he's unearthing this thing and this monster, right? Like a pumpkin head thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. So I was also kind of on the witch thing too. The voice at the end had that kind of vibe. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh. It's really good. Even if it's his sister, right? I don't even care about, like it could just be something that lied to him. And I don't even care about the face, right? Because I think the way they used the body and all that was so effective. Yes. Like when he's hiding on the bed and she like, you know, we hear her come in and, you know, the pumpkin goes down with the little kid's head in it. It's like trick or treat. You're like, fucking hey, yeah, that's Halloween shit. Like I was, I was like ecstatic. Like could have cheered on my couch like a touchdown was scored, right? I was so happy in that <laughs> moment. Yep. Every single frame of the movie after that was kind of the exact like, oh no, I thought it was a touchdown, but... They overturned it. And the other team actually got it and ran it back for a touchdown. Like, no. Right? So, you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, you're ending before you write this movie. <laughs> yeah. And that, I mean, that's how you become paid, right? Like they say, everyone can write a great first act. Pros write good third acts. Right. And this is not the first movie I've watched this year, even in theaters that did not have a good ending. Oh, no. Definitely. It's really hard to satisfy people. And I'm not saying I want like a concrete resolute ending. I don't need the monster sitting there burning and melting (laughs) and the kid like, I'm going to be okay. I don't need solid answers. I need something. It cannot be that he American gladiators out of the pit holding her hair as if this (laughs) creature who's had this hair and uses it to hunt other things doesn't know that her hair's in the pit where he can like. There's a lack of awareness that makes it silly and unreal. I know the whole movie's unreal, but you know what I mean? 
It takes me out of the believability I built with the film. And then we've seen her do these feats of just insane superhuman strength. You can't just hit her with the broom like three times. <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't work. And what is it saying? And it's, I, I honestly can't believe, because it's, it's one of those rare things, right? A lot of movies have really shitty endings and metaphors that don't work. But usually that's pretty obvious the whole time they're not going to be great. The fact that this movie achieves so much and is so good and clever and the craft is great for so long and just fucking trips with the goal line in sight is kind of shocking, honestly. I think that's one of the ways that I can, you know, reconcile how much I do like this movie. I'm like, okay, if we're at 98%. 98 percent of it is good <laughs> then which I is will... better than almost every movie that'll come out this year by the definitely, way definitely <laughs> definitely i've seen a lot of hype around a lot of movies that do not yeah. deliver nearly as much as what this has for me I, I i'm not gonna like act like i'm speaking for everybody because it's yeah i get it but for me this you know it has it has great atmosphere you have Lizzie mm-hmm. Kaplan turned up to 11, which is <laughs> way the fuck like, up there. She's so fantastic. <laughs> like just that image of her in his nightmare with her hands splayed out, like all with her eyes white. Like it's just Dude, so that scary. shiny I seen is so fucking amazing. It's so good. I wish that they had spent a little bit more time doing that. Um, and a then when the, we times. first see little sister, right? Her eyes look the same. Mm-hmm. And you're like, do something with it. God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a again, I we don't try to do a lot of like rewriting ending for clearly better and more professional people than us. Yeah, no, I would not. love to have been in like the writer's room as he's like sitting or whoever's just sitting on their fucking computer and being like, what did you throw out? Right. Like, What ending <laughs> did you throw out? Like, that's not enough. This feels like one of those where it's like, let's overshoot the room. Because they were doing everything so well, there has to be something they thought was going to, like, just crush. And, like, this is going to tie it all together for the audience, so it'll be style and substance, and it'll become this classic thing they make documentaries about. I fully believe that they thought they had some kind of insane winner of this ending. Yeah, or what is the, you know... I have no idea what that was supposed to be. You know? That's true. Studio input... The lion's gate i don't want to point any fingers there yeah. but you know because you think you if it was like what... a studio or someone or like a financier they'd be like hey can we get like a bloodbath in the final scene <laughs> like can we get something that looks like you know the kids getting killed again it seems like what happened there is that they were like you know it's really hot right now family trauma put that in there <laughs> yeah this is where the uh the a24 thing comes back yeah. and it's like we changed the game we are the fucking game now <laughs> and they do it if you're looking for that you're gonna get it and you're gonna get it uh, like uh top notch and that's perfectly fine but i think it's okay to make movies without it too we can we can have scary movies that are just scary this is is the prime example of your case yeah where a24 makes those movies really well sometimes we just want a slasher we just want a monster why do you think terrifier is so fucking popular even though it's a movie designed to repulse general audiences that's right what it, and there's nothing there's because no, there's no fucking trickery it's just a fucking scary ass clown until part two where they start adding in all this extra wild mythology eh. but still for the most of it <laughs> it's just a fucking murderous clown you're like yes if i was in an alley that would scare the fuck out of me yeah right i immediately understand what's happening and i will fucking sit there and be scared the whole movie because of this fucking clown Right. And it's it's fucking simple. It's back to basics of why people love scary films. And you don't always and this is not a movie that's overthinking anything else in the film. Yep. So it's kind of weird. I feel like I would love to just listen to like a commentary and just hear like what they thought they had done. Like this reminds me a little bit of um when we talked about the Babadook. Oh, yeah. And everyone's loving the journey. It's weird. It's supernatural. Is it in their heads? And then there's this one last scene where now the kid can do real magic. Like he can actually conjure a pigeon. And she takes worms to the basement and gets yelled at, but it's okay. And it's like, what the fuck does that mean? 
right? Like, I've had so many drunken arguments about what does the last scene of the Babadook <laughs> mean? Are they actually dead? And I was like, well, I doubt she's serving worms to anything in heaven. Like, it doesn't seem like a heavenly, you know? And it's like, there's no good answer. And if that movie had more of a fucking home run ending, maybe it goes a little higher than it did. I mean, it's a cult classic, obviously. But that this one. kind of feels like that, where it's like the whole movie's working, and it just, like, it follows another one, where by the end, it's just kind of gets in its own way, right? Well, it's always that your grief and your trauma will always be there. It, it, right. Like the Babadook, grief will always be there. You're going to have to feed it. You got to keep it at bay. It, I get I get that one because that's where the basics start. Well, with how it. did that kid do the pigeon? They're telling yeah, us this is not real. That kid is not pigeon. ever getting good at magic. Yeah, <laughs> Samuel is a fuck up. <laughs> but no, yeah. And again, Babadook's more of that kind of a film throughout that's kind of playing with those questions. Definitely, definitely. This one does have that, like, what's going on with this little boy's mindset? But it feels like pretty early on you start to be like, no, there is something back there. I don't I, I don't even think we like like I said, we don't need this on top of like a really good twist. Like that scene where he kills the parents in the kitchen, you 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 know, it's Chekhov's rat poison, right? They set that yep. up from the beginning and I yeah. was like, "Oh, that's I was like, "Why is he telling me. him what it tastes like?" And I was like, "Hmm, <laughs> all right." He's like, oh, and it also tastes like cinnamon. Yeah. So, you know. It tastes <laughs> really fucking good and people would eat it. But don't. <laughs> but it does taste fucking am- Like, yeah, my kids are getting into the bleach. I'm not going to be like, it tastes like uh, Prime, which you guys are obsessed with now because of a YouTube kid. <laughs> but don't drink it. Right? <laughs> like, that's not how you sell your kids danger. No, definitely but not. But this is not like up. a classic of the genre, right? But something as simple as Ernest Scared Stupid. There is a thing that is being protected by something. The seals get broken and now it's loose. Pumpkinhead. Uh, Amelia, Pumpkinhead, Trilogy yeah. of Terror, right? Leprechaun, Wishmaster. There's a whole genre of there is a monster. Do not disturb it. If you start fucking around, you'll find out, right? For whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense that this lonely kid is weaponized by the monster, too. You know, she's like, I had to wait till you were strong enough to move the clock or whatever. Yeah, right? she's actually using him as a pawn and that's and you don't know that until the end. I was I was certainly surprised by it. Even when he pushed that kid and broke his leg, I was like mm-hmm. I didn't even think like, oh, she's using him to do bad things. Like I was That like, was the oh, moment she's... I was like is he going to be possessed? Like I was confused at Right, for, like you said. But when Lizzie Kaplan, you really nailed it when when you're just like that moment where she's like don't let her out. That yeah. moment is fucking horrifying. Because now we know we're like, they're not the bad guys. Like, this movie's still going. They're yeah, clearly that's that not the bad guys. And her last line is a warning and a protection to her son. Yeah, so you're like, you know oh, man. Is, everything you know or think is not what it is. It, it, they pulled the same thing at um, at the end of The Ring. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. Remake, yes, where exactly she says, the like, you, like, the kid is like, you let her out? Why would you do something like that? And you're yeah. like what like i thought that yeah. was the resolution and this one does that pulls that same kind of rug out from underneath you where you're like oh, okay so she's bad it's the parents are bad but she's worse like the monster is yeah. worse were so, they just bad because they were afraid that he also would become a monstrous kid so was the little girl ever not monst? anyways yeah that's matter. the thing i don't want to ask that many questions and and, you, and, and this is the thing. You shouldn't have to. Like, did that movie so over-deliver my expectations? abso fucking Definitely. If, if I watched this movie, and I was like, if this is like a C-minus movie, I'm going to be pumped. And to me, this is like a fucking B-plus movie with an F-minus ending. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it still ends up being exactly where I thought it was. But, you know, there's a lot of movies that you're like, that's a C minus movie. And it kind of is always a C minus the whole journey of the movie. This one is fucking hills in one very big valley. Right. Yes. And I think that's what makes it harder with these movies sometimes is if a movie's just mostly incompetent the whole time, you're kind of not upset by that. You're like, maybe that's the best version of the movie they could make. Fair enough. Making movies is super fucking hard. I get it. This one is just fucking killing it to where it mm-hmm. does just feel like one of those. You're like, 
someone somewhere should have asked a question about this ending. And these clever <laughs> assemblage of artists should have been able to find a better version than this. I'm hoping what this does is uh, put Mr. Bodine like, Oh man. On a better path like that, you know, like if this is where you're starting, I think this was his directorial debut. He had a couple other movies, but I think they were all pretty small. I had never heard of any of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is, but, so if you're starting off with this. The the fear is great. though, is like, cause the, they obviously fucking did not set it up for success at the box office. I think I read it actually dropped the same weekend as Barbie and Oppenheimer. Or Ooh, one week God. before, and it's like, why would you just walk into the biggest, like, box office spectacle in forever, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, no one knew the avoid. Barbie was going <laughs> to be, like, on the course for, like, one of the biggest movies ever. Like, even if we thought it'd be big, it's, like, so overachieving. So, why would you put your little horror movie out the weekend where every theater's going to give ten theaters to two movies? Right. Like right. that, and even if you put it out a week before, like that's a, that's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's bad timing. And then I'm thinking like, why not yeah. do like a fall release? Like a, like this is obviously a Halloween yeah. movie. It's one of the yeah. reasons I chose it. Like, like last voyage of the Demeter is like a perfect summer horror film. Sure. Cause it's kind of a big set PC monster movie. It doesn't really have Halloween vibes. This one though, like first fucking day of October. It feels like the perfect thing to fucking draw people yes. out. I don't know. If or it's like place. hitting streaming right on the first day. You know, whenever you get it out. But I, I hope that the artists of the film are not punished by the stupidity of the scheduling. Because sadly, a lot of these movies, they'll just look at the box office. And it's I think I read it's one of the first horror movies to lose money theatrically and like like it, it did some rare thing where it's like pretty much horror has been money at the box office for the last couple of years. Unless it's drag. Cause like universal had two that lost money this year in the theater Renfield and last voyage of the Demeter. But those are way bigger movies than this one. Sure. This one should have been successful. Um, and it just wasn't. So I hope that they get another chance. Cause they're clearly some insanely talented people making this film. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think it, what you just said, I don't think this movie deserves that. <laughs> no, dude. If I, I found out this crew was making another movie, I'm immediately going to see it. Definitely. I would be ecstatic to see what comes next. Because, yeah, there, there's just so many just incredible moments, incredible choices. One of the hardest things in horror movies is building actual true tension. Right? Mm -hmm. Not jump scares, but, like, really fucking dragging out the tension. That's where the fun is. The moment you do the jump scare, all that's gone. And our bodies have to physically reset. So the amount that they're able to keep us in tension, right? Like, there's some really good craft in this film. And it makes me excited to see what they come up with next. Absolutely. I would be on board. I would love to see it. <laughs> I'm hoping. I think this will still end up in my top 10 horror films of the year by the end of the year, I'm guessing. It's one of mine, for sure. Yeah, Definitely. it's on there now. It's kind of in the middle. Uh, I think Knock at the Cabin is falling down my rankings. So that's another one that I was like, the ride of this movie is fucking amazing, and then the ending happens. And I was like, Ugh, don't love that. I would all, I would put this before Talk to Me. I think that I liked this better. I don't know why. See, this is my thing. I kind of do gut reactions when I watch them, and mm -hmm. then I just put them where they are. And then when you look at the list, you're like, but that doesn't feel right to me. Yep, I know. I think I talk to me. Mine is still Infinity Pool for the year. I fucking loved Infinity. Well, oh, I haven't seen Infinity Pool. Oh, uh, it's on Hulu. It's fucking awesome. Well, it was. I don't know. We were recording a little early. We're time travelers like that. They're right. <laughs> uh, we are the trauma past of the pocket. No. <laughs> but yeah, I think talk to me is my number two right now. That one's pretty solid. This one, I would say, if this had a better ending, I right? think it fucking crushes talk to me. That's what I'm saying. I think on like just a movie level. Like, the journeys I was on, I like this one way better. And that ending's just kind of, I stubbed my toe. Yeah. But I was like, by the end of the year, I'll probably have liked it better than Evil Dead Rise. Like, there's some movies that I like that I think it could jump for me. I didn't even think about Evil Dead Rise. I think I might. It, it's following up. 
Yeah, because that one didn't have the greatest ending ever. Scream 6 was fucking amazing, but had a terrible ending. So you're like, that's kind of the theme of 2020. Like, Scream 6, I was like, is this as good as the first one? And then I was like, oh, wait, they had the worst ghost face reveal in franchise history, including part three with Roman. I was like, yikes. So it's kind of the theme of the the year so far is like these awesome horror rides that just like kind of fall flat at the end. That makes me nervous because I'm like, is that what the year is going to be like? You know? uh, I don't know. I have big high hopes. By the time they've heard this, we probably have already covered Exorcist Believer. I have super oh, high man, hopes yes. for that movie. So if I was screaming about that earlier in the week and you hear this, <laughs> know that I believed it was going to be amazing. Yeah, let me tell you right now, the ending of that movie is going to suck. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome, 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 worst ending ever. That's the year we're in. I'll tell you a good one. I don't know if you've seen it. I think I, I streamed it on Showtime maybe, but it's called There's Something Wrong with the Children. Oh, we just watched it. It's really intense. I liked it. I thought yeah, it was I, th I thought it was like shockingly awesome, like little horror movie that I, it kind of just like, no, I didn't hear about it at all. And I turned it on. It was like really like sweating on the couch. I was like, God, this talk about awkward parent nightmare. That's yeah. the one. <laughs> that one's good. We got to do that one. Cause that one was pretty fun. And it's, it's another, another one, one that's so like, over kicks. Yeah. It's, it's good because again, it's, there, I think what works really well in that movie is there's no explanation before. None. And there's no explanation really after. It's just, it is what it is. Like, yeah. there's just some, there's, there's some messed up stuff going on in the woods and mm. it is affecting the children. Something takes over. It doesn't even tell you what it is. They never give any voice or explanation to it. It's just I'm like okay this. I'm that because that's how yes. scary stuff happens. The scariest yes. stuff is not explained. So sometimes when they're hitting us over the head with it, I'm like, I don't. I don't need you to do it. I don't need yeah. the explanation. Got it. Right. The, the less... more you know and understand about a thing, the inherently less scary it is. Think about the most. Although that's an old truism. <laughs> and then as I get older, I'm like, that's not true, man. <laughs> like, There's stuff that I definitely learn more about and I'm 50 times more scared. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's more on like a real world level, not like my, my story times. Um, but yeah, you can be our unofficial horror correspondent. And come back with any horror movie you want anytime you want. Definitely. So I know we had also talked about Mark Wahlberg's fear. We oh, have to do that I, sometime. Such a classic. Please. That right. and this I, I debated on that in Devil's Candy for this. I was like, Ooh, oh my gosh. I remember we had talked about Devil's I Candy. I know. I've always had right. it in the back of my head, but I was like, should I pick that? I was like, yeah. no. It's Make a list. Movie. We do horror movies all year, not just October. We just do a right. fucking ton in October. So write them down and we'll schedule you in. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining. You were amazing as always. Would you like to tell the people one more time where they can find you online? Yes, you can find me on Instagram. It's at JJRose7 and it's J-A-Y-J-A-Y-Rose7. I have um, one of my contributions will be printed and should be out to people by the time this airs um, from House of Leaves, Filtered Reality. I did a really, really intense awesome look at uh folklore in the Blair Witch nice. uh project so that'll be out to everybody and then I've got something else along the pipeline and I just agreed to do a pretty big project nice I'm really excited about it can't yeah. not talking about it yet because it's super preliminary but I just said yes I have a son I have no time but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well sorry for taking it then sorry for no, taking your no, time this is <laughs> No, trust me. You know. Yeah. I I talked to the people at the the Publix of the street. I'm like, did you guys see that parent life? Yeah. <laughs> I need aching. some of this back. Yeah. Well, you I have been one of our go to go-tos since the first full mega marathon. So we always reach out. Uh, always happy that you come back year to year. I will. Someday Every you'll just year. say, no, no, we're too big now, and I'll cry a little, but I'll be proud of you. That but will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> never that's for you guys not me i'm trying to do that to alex every day that's my thing is to be famous enough to quit my own show <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah go follow uh jessica you won't regret it hopefully you'll see her back soon uh more than anything thank you for spending the time you guys know the deal the mega marathon every single day in october another horror movie podcast because uh we've lost our minds we just love halloween time we fucking love it so we'll see you again tomorrow with another amazing horror movie uh adventure thank you for your time we'll see you then bye <laughs>